guys and welcome to Hada Gastro. Today we will be talking about blood testing and what normal values mean in a blood test. So let's get started. So where do normal values come from? Blood analysis testing is used to diagnose and monitor many different health conditions. A sample of blood is taken and studied in various ways to get information about what is happening inside the body by the process of examining the different kinds of cells, chemicals and proteins in the blood. In today's presentation, we will only be talking about the hematology part of the blood test and what the significance of their normal values are. So when I talk about normal values, I basically am talking about what the average values are for a healthy normal human being. So normal values are only for people who don't have any underlying disease, disorder, pathology related to their condition. Okay, and today we're only going to be talking about the hematology part, which is basically the cellular component part. And I will be doing some separate videos on renal function testing as well as liver function testing and the biochemical tests, which are also part of the blood test. But today we're only going to be talking about the cells in the blood. In order for us to see what's happening on a cellular level in the blood, we have to take a blood sample and it has to be sent to a laboratory where it undergoes further testing so that we can receive a set of results that reflect our blood cellular studies. So as I mentioned earlier, today we'll only be covering the hematology part of the blood test. And this is what a table of normal hematology results looks like. So first of all, we have the white blood cell count, which has a normal value of 4,500 to 10,000 per microliter. We have the red blood cells, which are 4.2 million to 5.6 million per microliter. We have the normal hemoglobin level at 12 to 17 grams per deciliter. We have the normal hematocrit value at 37 to 48%. We have the mean corpuscular volume at 79 to 95 femtoliters. We have the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration at 32 to 36 grams per deciliter. We have the platelets at 150,000 to 400,000 per microliter. We have the neutrophils, which make up 40 to 75 percent of all white blood cells. We have the lymphocytes, which make up 20 to 45 percent of all white blood cells. We have monocytes, which make up 0 to 12 percent of all white blood cells. We have eosinophils, which make up 0 to 5 percent of all white blood cells. And we have finally the basophils, which make up 0 to 2 percent of all white blood cells. So, this is actually a very important table, and this is something that doctors use on a daily basis. and throughout their careers and this is very helpful in guiding us towards a specific pathology and ruling out another. So if you're a bit confused as to what everything means, don't panic. I will be explaining each one of these tests in detail so you can stay tuned for that. So before I talk about each cellular component separately, I just want to speak a little bit about where the blood cells come from. Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets are produced in the bone marrow, which is the soft fatty tissue inside of our bone cavities. Within the bone marrow, all blood cells originate from a single type of unspecialized cell called a stem cell. When a stem cell divides, it first becomes an immature red blood cell, white blood cell, or platelet producing cell, and the immature cell then divides, matures further, and ultimately becomes a mature red blood cell, white blood cell. Or platelet. So basically you can see here this is the bone marrow which is the fatty tissue that is found within our bones and you can see here the bone marrow gives birth to these stem cells which are basically a set of primary cells and these primary cells have a certain code which tell them what cells they need to become essentially. So these cells differentiate into immature red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets and essentially those immature cells become matured and in the end we're left with the mature versions of each. And something to note here is that there's not just one type of white blood cell. We have a variety of white blood cells 
This picture here shows all the variety of white blood cells. We have the monocyte, the lymphocyte, the neutrophil, the eosinophil, and the basophil. So there's this table again. And now that we know where these cells come from, let's take each of these tests step by step and break them down and make them easier to understand and explain further. The white blood cells. So as we mentioned earlier, the normal value in a healthy human being is 4,500 to 10,000 white blood cells per microliter. And white blood cells are also called leukocytes and they are the cells of the immune system that are involved in protecting the body against both infectious disease and foreign invaders. All white blood cells are produced and derived from multipotent cells in the bone marrow known as hematopoietic stem cells and can be found throughout the body including in the blood and the lymphatic system. So going back to this picture, as I explained all these cells here come from these hematopoietic stem cells or these primary cells and that includes the white blood cells. And these are the different types of white blood cells. Again, we have the monocyte, the eosinophils, the basophils, the neutrophils, and the lymphocytes. So leukopenia is the medical term that is used to describe a low white blood cell count. And when we talk about a low white blood cell count, we're talking about a value less than 4,500 white blood cells per microliter. So if you remember what the normal value for white blood cells were, they were 4,500 to 10,000 per microliter. So now, if we have something less than 4,500, this is called leukopenia. And the causes of leukopenia are an HIV infection, autoimmune disorders, bone marrow disorders, a lymphoma, severe infections, liver and spleen diseases, systemic lupus erythematosus, and finally, radiation therapy. And these are all causes of leukopenia or low white blood cell count. So the opposite of leukopenia is leukocytosis. And this is a medical term that is used to describe a high white blood cell count. So again, we said that the normal value of the white blood cells is 4,500 to 10,000 per microliter. So anything above 10,000 per microliter of white blood cells is known as leukocytosis. And some causes for leukocytosis are anemia, infections, tumors in the bone marrow, leukemia, inflammatory conditions such as arthritis and bowel disease, stress, exercise, tissue damage, pregnancy, or allergies. So now let's talk about the next test, which is the red blood cell count. So if you remember, the normal value of the red blood cells in the body is 4.2 million to 5.6 million per microliter. So if you look in this picture, you can see these little red cells that are just flowing down this vessel. These are actually the red blood cells. And the red blood cells are the cells in the body that are responsible for carrying fresh oxygen throughout the body to various cells and tissues. So they're actually very important cells in the body. Now we're going to talk about a higher than normal number of red blood cells. And this is called erythrocytosis or polycythemia. And this is when the red blood cell value is greater than or more than 5.6 million per microliter. So the causes of erythrocytosis or polycythemia is cigarette smoking because cigarette smoking induces carboxyhemoglobinemia and this puts a pressure on the tissues in the body because they don't receive enough oxygen. So there is a tendency for that red blood cells to increase so that more oxygen can be given to the body's tissues. We can also have a problem with the heart structure and function that is present at birth, which is a congenital heart disease. The failure of the right side of the heart, which is called core pulmonale. Dehydration, for example, in cases of severe diarrhea. A kidney tumor, 
which is called a renal cell carcinoma, low blood oxygen levels, which is hypoxia, scarring or thickening of the lungs, which is called pulmonary fibrosis, bone marrow disease that causes abnormal increase in red blood cells, which is a disease called polycythemia vera, and your red blood cell count will also increase for several weeks when you are found at a higher altitude. So this was polycythemia or a high number of red blood cells in your blood count. So now let's talk about what a lower than normal number of red blood cell means. And these are values below 4.2 million per microliter. So causes of lower than normal red blood cells include anemia, bleeding, bone marrow failure, for example from radiation, toxins or a tumor, deficiency of a hormone called erythropoietin, which is caused by a kidney disease, red blood cell destruction, which is called hemolysis, due to transfusion, blood vessel injury or other causes, leukemia, malnutrition, bone marrow cancer, which is called multiple myeloma, too little iron, copper, folic acid, vitamin B6 or vitamin B12 in the diet, too much water in the body or overhydration, pregnancy, and drugs that can decrease the red blood cell count, such as chemotherapy, chloramphenicol, the hydantoins, and quinidine. Now we're going to talk about the third test from our list, and that is the hemoglobin test. And the normal values of hemoglobin is 12 to 17 grams per deciliter. Hemoglobin is a protein molecule in the red blood cells, which carry oxygen from the lungs to the body's tissues and returns carbon dioxide from the tissues back to the lungs. The hemoglobin molecule contains iron and is the pigment that makes our blood red. So in the picture below, you can see the red blood cell and this is what the hemoglobin molecule looks like. So it's actually a protein that is found in the red blood cell. So this is what hemoglobin is, if you're wondering. So what does a lower than normal hemoglobin mean? A low hemoglobin level is also called hypohemoglobinemia and these are any values below 12 grams per deciliter of hemoglobin. So some causes of hypohemoglobinemia include anemia which is caused by red cells dying earlier than normal such as in a hemolytic anemia, bleeding from the digestive tract or bladder or having heavy menstrual periods, a chronic kidney disease, hypothyroidism, a thalassemia, which is a genetic disorder that causes low levels of hemoglobin in red blood cells, the bone marrow being unable to produce new red blood cells, and this may be due to leukemia, other cancers, drug toxicity, radiation therapy, infections, or bone marrow disorders. Poor nutrition, including a low level of iron, folate, vitamin B12, or vitamin B6, and other chronic illnesses such as rheumatoid arthritis. A higher than normal hemoglobin level would mean a hemoglobin level more or greater than 17 grams per deciliter, and this is caused most often by low levels of oxygen in the blood, which is known as hypoxia, when it is present over a long period of time. And some other common reasons for high hemoglobin level include certain birth defects of the heart that are present at the birth which is called congenital heart disease failure of the right side of the heart or core pulmonale severe chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or copd scarring or thickening of the lungs which is pulmonary fibrosis or other severe lung disorders other reasons for a high hemoglobin level include a rare bone marrow disease that leads to abnormal increase in the number of blood cells, which is called polycythemia vera, and the body having too little water and fluids, and that is called dehydration. So another test that was found on our table of hematology tests was the hematocrit. And the hematocrit is 
a blood test that measures how much of a person's blood is made up of red blood cells. And this measurement depends on the number and the size of the red blood cells. So the normal value of the hematocrit lied between 37 to 48%. And this is a test tube of our blood and it has been centrifuged. Basically, that means it is separated into different densities. And the red blood cells are the heaviest, so they fall to the bottom. And we have the leukocytes next in line and the platelets. And finally, we have the plasma above. So in this test tube, we have the erythrocytes at the bottom. And this is about 37 to about 48% of this test tube. And this is actually what the hematocrit value is. It measures how much of a person's blood is made up of red blood cells. So a high hematocrit would be anything above 48%. And the causes of a high hematocrit include congenital heart disease, failure of the right side of the heart or core pulmonale, too little water in the body, low levels of oxygen in the blood, which is called hypoxia, scarring or thickening of the lungs, pulmonary fibrosis and a bone marrow disease that causes an abnormal increase in red blood cells which is called polycythemia vera. So by now you guys should have noticed a trend. When we have a high red blood cell count, hematocrit or high hemoglobin count, the causes more or less are the same because they are all related specifically to the red blood cells and when we have a low red blood cell count, a low hematocrit or a low hemoglobin value, we will have the same kind of causes because they're all related again to the red blood cells specifically. So a low hematocrit would mean a hematocrit value of less than 37% and these include anemia, bleeding, destruction of the red blood cells, leukemia, malnutrition, too little iron, folate, vitamin B12, vitamin B6 in the diet and too much water in the body or over hydration. So guys this video is a bit long to squeeze all into one so this is part one and please do click on part two to watch the rest of this presentation.